So I opened up this deck on Right Action and I keep seeing messages about surrendering and letting go. Like someone is at the last hurdle and I was setting up for this reading and I was getting my incense ready and I was wondering why is it not burning? And it's because it had pushed itself up against the side of the glass jar that it's in. So it's like someone has their back up against the wall, not realising that if they just move forward, if they step towards it, it's going to clear itself. Hello, my name is Bronwyn. This is Bronwyn's Co of Tarot. And this is a timeless collective reading on what is coming forward. Now, I'm sorry if you can hear noise in the background. My neighbours can be noisy. It does say here for right action. Aparigraha literally means let everything that wants to go, go and everything that wants to come, come. Because receiving in reverse, someone here is pushing, I don't know if it's out of fear or because they wanna control. They wanna control how this win comes in for them. This queen of pentacles, I've got all these decks that are just around me, but this queen of pentacles here, it's yours anyway. But the more that you push against letting some sort of fear base I don't know, idea, thought pattern, whatever it may be, the more that you hold on to that, the more you push away what it is that's coming in blessing form. Now, I'm going to be ringing this bell. This is just to cleanse the space around us. If you have any type of sound sensitivity, please turn down your listening device in three, two, one. I'm also going to be ringing the lady bell, the one with like the boxer's nose. <laughs> I'm just going to show her to you. She has the nose of a boxer. In three, two, one. Perfect. So let's see. Inner power. Give me the courage and the power to do what must be done. Okay, someone here. This is confirmation for you. It's confirmation that someone needs to take that leap and let go of something. And I had, I just want to say, I just, I just want to say, and then I don't hear what they say. You've got change here. When the ego finally sees that utter madness of trying to control everything four of pentacles you come to a sacred crossroads in your own evolution there's an ego death coming in for someone here let me just move my incense there's a final ego death and it doesn't mean that there won't be ones further on down the line it just means that the era that you have been going through where it feels like you've been biting heads or You've been chasing your own tail, I heard. The right action right now is to surrender to divine love. It's to, to surrender whatever it is that you feel that you have to control or this person feels they have to control. You have divine flow in reverse. Eventually, one sublime desire takes precedence over all others to follow the Tao, the divine flow at all costs. Yes, yeah, so someone here is fearing. They're fearing that change. They're fearing diving off into the deep end when you offer everything to the divine with detachment you begin a love affair with spirit who's doing this is this you is this someone around you trust is coming out wow okay allow me divine to give you my deepest longings trusting you to know exactly how to handle them so you have a lot of guides around you here as you go through some sort of metamorphosis some sort of transformation um Whenever I see butterflies, especially these emperor butterflies, these are like passed over loved ones, ancestors, guides that are with you. They're with you. They're, they're helping you along the way. But you have to trust. And it's not saying that you haven't trusted in the, in, the, in the past. It's not saying that you haven't surrendered in the past. This is like a deep shedding. Someone's shedding a lot. It's almost like a snake as they, they shed their skin. It takes a while. It can be painful. It can be uncomfortable. Look, the hand man to the empress. There's a reason why you're being asked to move yourself away from that wall. That you're being asked to just float. It's not about running towards whatever it is that scares you. As much as it is as just taking that tentative step to say, okay, I'm open. I'm ready to let this go. And allowing, allowing this change to come in for you. Because the Empress is, the thing is, both of these cards, in both of these cards, they are almost, not frozen, but paused. And they're just hanging in slow motion in the water, in the air. 
there's a need here to allow things to unfold the way that they need to rather than how you want them to let me put down right action here and the thing is the first two that have come out are all to do with the way that you connect and, and communicate with yourself because it's all blue getting archangel michaels here as well you are being you're very protected and i don't know why but i'm getting like a small child like a small child wanting to speak and not being heard so i don't know if what it is that needs to be released, that final ego death is connected to the child you were, the child that you are, okay? Especially with the solar plexus energy coming up and it's the trust of a child, right? Speaking this into truth. And it's like many moons, many ancestors have gone through the same thing or understand what you're going through or understood what you have been through. Or maybe you walked with them in past lives while this happened. But you're being told that you have to trust the change that's coming in. If you push against it, it doesn't mean the change won't come in. It just means that the change will be harder and it will be more challenging and more uncomfortable. It's a tower that's falling. You have to let it fall. Now, the thing is as well, if this doesn't resonate for you, um, why am I hearing it will? That's very presumptuous of me, isn't it? No, I don't know. If someone's saying that this is not me, I've already surrendered, I've surrendered, I've surrendered. If you've already surrendered, you don't need to tell me this because this is an ego death. Remember that. If it's an ego death, you don't need to, to lead with ego. And I'm not saying that I am not in the same position as you having to, so not having to surrender. I do too. I'm there too. You know, but you have here the six of swords to the magician in reverse. And I, I heard I'm not ready. The universe thinks you are. I mean, that Six of Swords is about moving on to better things. And look at this. Oh my gosh, there are the butterflies again. There are the two butterflies. Follow them, trust them. I heard for someone specific because my channel is not religious, but I welcome in all religions, all walks of life. And I heard, follow the Lord. So for someone here, it's follow the Lord. Vishnu Veda I don't know what that means but you're being told to follow the Lord and oh my gosh I've just seen all the butterflies on here as well okay the change coming in it's changing the butterflies it's changing the ancestors it's changing who comes in to guide you as well from one to many I heard from one to many and the way that I've laid these cards down next to each other can you see how you have only two butterflies there and then all of a sudden this change comes in and there are thousands I know there isn't but there's thousands the voice of many there's something about your voice being very important and the reach that it has the same as you see here I don't know if this is Krishna or if this is Kali but the amount of arms, the reach that this this deity has, this energy has here to be able to touch. I heard to, to pierce and touch into many veils. Wow, the change that's coming in as this ego death happens, it encourages and it actually, it, it means that you can travel to other dimensions or other veils and seek information from them. Why am I getting their Kashuk records? And I heard a fresh start, a fresh start for someone here. I'm going to put the hanged man down, the empress. In silence is growth or in silence we wait. In silence we wait. The hanged man is giving me Pisces energy, very much so. Endings, the new beginnings can come in. Spirituality, karma. This is the end of a massive karmic cycle, as was said in my last reading. But this here, you're being asked to trust even if you feel like you're not ready. The magician coming out in reverse, this is feeling like you don't have what it is that you need to create what it is that you want or to create that path. Or this is something about a lack of power, a lack of authority, feeling like you aren't number one in something. It's not saying in, in life or in everything, but in something here. And you're being asked to trust, to really flipping trust. I keep looking at that control card, that four of pentacles. And I I remember someone saying this, and I can't remember who, but it stuck with me. People who try to control what's happening around them, control because when they were young, 
they were unable to control their environment and make themselves feel safe. So they do it when they are adults, especially if we don't heal that. This is not me calling you out. This is not me judging you in any way, shape or form, because we all have wounds to a certain degree. You know, this ego death is about trusting that as you trust and let go of that control, you are safe, you are held, you are loved. And whatever comes next is exactly where you're supposed to be. You have the hanged man in reverse. You have the Knight of Wands coming out. This is all obstacles being removed. Because that let, let everything that wants to go, go. And everything that wants to come, come. There was a need for there to be a pause in rest and reflection so that you could gather yourself. So that you could gain that Empress energy. Now change is coming in and it's doing the opposite. All obstacles have been removed. All obstacles have been removed is what I'm hearing. And something's coming in very fast. Very, very fast. Should I put this down? No, okay. This deck, this deck, where would you like me to go? This one? Okay. Now I'm going to ring my bell. I'm not sure if I already have. I'm going to ring my bell again anyway. Um, if you have any type of sound sensitivity, please turn down your listen device in three, two and one. And this one. What else do we need to know? Queen of Pentacles to the High Priestess in reverse. The King of Cups. There's a need to let go of something from the past when it comes to relationships. It could be mother and father. It could be caregivers. It could be... It's feeling like something is always going to go wrong always going to go wrong no matter how and it's it is going back to childhood there is a small child within you within your solar plexus within various parts of your psyche that with this high priestess in reverse we can talk about magic all day you know till the cows come home and be like this is negative magic but really when we strip that away this is somebody who abused their power this is somebody who was supposed to make you feel safe and they failed at doing so they let you down in that aspect in some way. They didn't nurture you. They didn't foster that light within you. This is the solar plexus again. You have the king of cups. This could have been someone that was supposed to be a provider. It could have been both. Okay. But this altogether is a representation of what it is that you're being asked to let go of. And it doesn't mean that you are to dismiss or ignore the fact that your emotions are valid they're valid and i heard um someone say on smosh and i was like oh, okay every emotion is valid but not every emotion emotion is reasonable and i was like okay i like that perspective that there's something here about holding on to something that happened when you were young and it's not saying that you aren't allowed to feel sad or hurt or angry but something's being stripped away or you're being asked to take your back off of that wall because you don't need to have your back on that wall anymore you are safe you are safe you are safe to walk away from that that wall to allow the incense the smoke whatever needs to cleanse through and go through you to go through you and that's what I mean by letting go. I do not mean dismissing what you went through and going, just let go of it. You'll be fine. No. It's letting go of feeling like you can't get past this or you can't heal from something here. Because it seems to have shadowed certain relationships with the, the lovers coming out in reverse. Investing in the, the wrong type of love or the wrong type of security that was never safe. You have temperance coming out in reverse. A lack of balance here. A real lack of balance. And you also have here the Ace of Pentacles. Look, investing in things that didn't make you feel safe even though you were so desperately looking for it. Let me just place these down. Because we have here, and oh, I just knocked that over. The High Priestess in reverse to the Lovers. We have the Queen of Pentacles to the Ace of Pentacles. Temperance to the King of Cups. 
it's like investing in trying to nurture yourself maybe i feel like someone's done a lot of work on themselves a lot a lot of inner healing a lot of um investing in themselves after a very long time of always wanting others to invest in you but investing your energy and time in the wrong people the wrong places the wrong jobs the wrong everything and i'm not saying wrong to say that you are a failure in any way shape or form more that it was always seeking for what was seeking for you but then running from what it was that was seeking you if that makes sense it is like wanting to be in a healthy um balanced loving relationship but always running after those who had the facade of they could give you that and running away from those who are openly hey i'm here it's like that energy of nice guy finishes last all right and then realizing that actually why are they finishing last when they should have been picked first um and i don't know if that's a good analogy or not you know tell me if that resonates and this energy is not gelling again why can I get um, some clarity, please, on the High Priestess and the Lovers with the Hanged Man? There was definitely a block put in here. Look, Five of Swords. Something was blocked from you, from like, it was blocked from view for a very long time. And I don't know that if that's because you didn't want to see it or because it was just blocked from you and you weren't ready to see it. But with the Five of Swords in reverse, it was keeping you away from conflict or so you thought it was because this is like turning a blind eye to a red flag or turning a blind eye to being stabbed in the back because you have right action you know let everything that wants to go go and everything that wants to come come with hanged man the high priestess in reverse lovers and then the five of swords it's like trying to hold on to the remnants of past relationships be that with your mother your father caregivers friends that have you know you're no longer friends with jobs romantic partners and looking back and going but i really wanted that to work or i really wanted this to work or i really i really could have done well in blah 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 but you weren't meant to that was supposed to be a lesson and nothing more and you have caution here someone is is guarding their heart against love someone has doesn't mean that you have like a you don't have an ice heart but someone has like an almost like an igloo someone's built themselves an igloo around their heart and it's not made you're not your heart is not made out of ice i have to reiterate that it's that it's being kept warm with the coldness of what you experienced in the past and now is the time to lay that part bare to the sun so that it can be melted you have the Princess of Wands in reverse. Princess of Wands is someone who is youthful, fun, adventurous, maybe a bit immature, irresponsible, but, you know, they're ready to go out on an adventure. They're ready to take risks. In reverse, this is caution. This is not wanting to take risks. This is not wanting to be too adventurous next to the moon when it comes to feelings, when it comes to how we express ourselves, when it comes to love, when it comes to going on dates or you know, holding hands or thinking about what it would be like in a healthy relationship. So this is for a very specific person here. Okay. And I always say this about those who shout the loudest in my comment section. And I love you. I love you all. I, it is a judgment, but it's, it's a judgment with love. The ones that shout the loudest that they don't want love are the ones that need it the most. So anyone that's in the comment section going in shouty caps, I don't want love. I everyone wants love. Why would why would you not want to be loved? Um, I hope I honestly genuinely hope that you heal what it is within you and you have that ego death so that whoever it is that is ready to come into your life in an equal exchange, balanced, truly balanced, can do so. I didn't think this was going to be a love reading, but it seems to be an inner love, a self-love, and maybe even a romantic love. This isn't so much about someone else coming in, to be quite honest, as much as it is about you going within and allowing those boundaries to fall, not because there is a romantic partner on the distance, but because by allowing those boundaries to fall and really be vulnerable with that part of yourself, 
it allows the universe to go, ha, huh, that person may be open to receiving that. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what's what we can jig and shuffle around in the universe and get ready to bring towards you. And, you know, it could be in the next month. It could be in the next year. It could be in the next five years. Time is, 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 is um, what's the word, Irrele irrelevant right now. This is about you and trusting that your guides are taking you to the right path, giving you the right action, the right guidance. This is not just about finding someone. This is about going within because the more that you go within, the more that you are going to connect to other realms. Because what is that saying? You know, to know thyself is to know that is to know God. And that isn't even um, me, again, saying something Christian because it was actually seen on the sides of uh, pyramids in Egypt long before, long before Christianity also took that and went that's beautiful let's use that too um but knowing thyself brings you closer it brings you closer to the oneness of all you know to knowing your own soul and this is what you're being called to do because somebody is feeling guarded feeling super guarded here now i want to pop you there and you here and i would like to go actually i would like to get myself an oracle because I haven't got an oracle out for a while. This one, maybe. Yeah, that one's calling to me as well. So let's have a look and see what wants to come out. I'm really called cool to this message card. A message that wants to come through from yourself, from the divine, from your higher self, maybe, also. Tell me about the higher self. What, what message is there? What message do we have, please? Message of concern is upside down. I feel like your higher self wants you to know that it is safe for you to open up that door again. It is safe for you to surrender. Can I get one more, please, for the last breath? Marriage is in reverse. And main female is in reverse to poverty. I don't know if there is this energy of um why am I getting that this isn't about someone going for a divorce? It can be, but this is more to do with like separation of family. Is this like moving away from a father figure or a mother figure? Or whoever it was that was your caregivers? It's like moving away from any balanced or any unbalanced energy it's putting your mental health first so i don't know if you are still in contact with your mother your father if they're still on this planet if um or your caregiver for example or if it's a, if you're strained your relationship is strained or if you don't speak to them at all there is a difference between going i'm no longer speaking to this person to going i'm no longer tethered energetically and emotionally to that person even though i don't see them anymore and this marriage being in reverse there seems to be um the encouragement to surrender and let go of anything that is i heard anything that is left over that's lasting almost like an etheric not an etheric thread at all it almost looks like um slimer out of ghostbusters when he has been and if you have you if you don't know who slimer is please go and google him he's amazing he's so disgusting he's he's like this apparition thing that is just slimy and he looks like a potato he's like he's like a translucent looking green potato with a big nose and teeth and um when he's been in a certain place he leaves like a bit of a slime trail and that's the energy that I'm seeing here. Like it's like wispy and translucent, but there is no cord. It's more to do with your emotional body and how it still has like vibrations or remnants of memories, maybe. Emotional cord, emo it's not cords, emotional attachments in some way to the memory of people from the past or places from your past that you're being asked to now just surrender to. And if that means surrendering to the emotion, surrendering to whatever comes up when you're doing a meditation, 
surrendering to going, hey, I feel unsafe. Why do I still feel unsafe even though I know the universe has got my flipping back? What's going on here? What are my next steps? Do I need to go and go for a jog? Do I need to do some boxing? Do I need to swim? Do I need to journal? Do I need to dance? What's going to help me move that energy and bring that energy from the emotional body into my mental body so that I can analyze that and I can surrender it? Okay, and I've been told to go to the Seasons of the Witch, so let's have a look. Can I get clarity on this, please? Thank you. Can I get clarity for um, the collective, please? What is it that you would like the collective to do at this time when it comes to trust and change? And what is the right action? What is the right action for the collective right now? One second. What is the right what is the right action for the collective right now? Please and thank you, collect. Thank you, thank you, spirit. Not that one. Oh yes, take it. You want to take this one? No? Okay. Okay. Harvest moon. Slow your heart and move gently into the coming of self. And then this one was mountain cabin. There are times when solitude can be healing and enlightening. And I feel like I should be reading both of these. Okay. So the first one is number 20 and the second one is number 27. Let's see. 27. Let me pop it in there quick, quick, quick. And then number 20. Harvest moon. Keywords, realigning with the soul. Time for a slower pace and self-care. Slow your heart and move gently into the coming of self. Your higher self chose this card because fall is a natural time for adopting a slower pace. The harvest moon is generally the full moon that occurs closest to the autumn equinox. And is associated with balance, realignment and reflection. At the time the air gets a familiar crispness, the days are notice noticeably, I can't say the word, shorter and animals begin to find warmer places to shelter and no one could blame you for seeking out comfort foods and warm drinks. Slowly, slowing down naturally leads to a desire for more self-support, making the harvest moon one of the best moon energies for focusing on spiritual nourishment and well-being. Your soul is guiding you through this card to shine a light on your, your self-care needs. Prioritizing rest and relaxation is a worthy cause, but making space for all forms of self-care is necessary for feeling supported and fulfilled. Today, you may need to give yourself some grace when a deadline has come and gone and you still are no closer to achieving what you wanted. Tomorrow you might need that one friend who always makes you laugh even when it seems as though the world is shifting beneath your feet. The day after you may need to dance naked and sing in the bathroom using your hairbrush as a microphone. Reflect upon the ways you have neglected yourself, doing so with self-compassion and self-love. There's no need to slap yourself on the wrist for forgetting to drink enough water or those times you cancelled on your friends at the last minute as long as you make a commitment to doing your best moving forward. Every moment of awareness is an opportunity to make a new choice and every new choice is a de deposit into your well-being bank account. So, this is about pouring love into yourself. This is definitely to do with self-care and I think taking time, because as much as this reading has been very intensely focused on, you know, moving your back away, people that kind of have their back up against the wall, and even that saying is, it's fear-based, isn't it? Like when animals feel scared, they kind of find a corner to kind of curl into. If you feel that that's where you are, it's okay to gently ask yourself why you feel like that. And to, to find self-care things that actually help you on this journey of self-discovery, of what it is that is for you, what isn't for you, what you need to prioritise. And to not feel guilty for not putting other people before you, especially when we're looking at parental figures, 
carers, those who are our elders, um, as, because we live in a society where you have to put those, those people first and you always have had to put those people first. But sometimes it happens to our own detriment, right? So you're being asked to really pull back your energy and look into yourself. Now, the other card that came out was Mountain Cabin. And I find it very interesting that it says there are times when solitude can be healing and enlightening, especially as we're just talking about pulling back your energy. And it says here, keywords, disconnecting, solitude and hermiting. There are times when solitude can be healing and enlightening. Your higher self chose this card because there are too many things influencing your life. And sometimes, and sometimes, excuse me, and sometimes to yourself, to listen to your inner spirit is exactly what you need. Most friends and family have the best intentions when offering their advice, but they can only speak from their experiences and do not have a full understanding of your life story. Even those closest to you, such as a sibling, parent or best friend, won't know everything about you why you've made certain choices or goals you daydream about. Your soul is guiding you through this card to disconnect from the world so that you can find the best pathway forward without the pollution of other people's opinions. It's much easier to find confidence in yourself without the questions, doubt, concerns or criticism you're likely facing from those in your life. Take a solo vacation is excellent if that is available to you, but finding a quiet corner to yourself, journaling or simply keeping your plans under wraps are all excellent ways to experience solitude. And I mean, I know we've gone from the Harvest Moon, which was talking about like, you know, leaning on friends. I think it's finding that easy balance as you go forward in making this change and trusting, trusting yourself, trusting yourself and whether you need to have solitude and you don't want to speak to anyone or whether you wish to lean on somebody and, you know, and have that friend that you can have over for a cup of tea where you can talk about it. It says here that the Mountain Cabin card also reminds you that you are worthy and enough all by yourself. It may feel easier, safer and more comfortable to take a new journey with a partner, but some experiences have room only for a solo traveller. If you're about to embark on a new change, know that you are given this path for a reason. It's your path to walk alone and you are more than capable of seeing it through. Wow. I really hope that this has given you some confirmation and clarity on what you already intuitively know. I don't feel like I need to go any further with this message because otherwise it will just repeat. Um, if you are new to my channel and this resonated and you liked what you heard and you'd like to see more of when I post and my content, I would love for you to hit on the like, the subscribe and the notification bell so you can see just that. Um, know that I also now have memberships. Ooh. Um, they're not pricey. I've got one tier only. It's the only place that you will see live readings from me. I will be posting live readings twice a month and I will also be posting at least once a week with new content that you will not see over here. You will only see it on the membership, okay? So if you're interested in that, just have a look down below. If you haven't subscribed and you would like to be a member, if you subscribe and then press the button join, it will give you all the instructions you need, okay? Uh, know that I appreciate everyone that has been giving me donations and donations to Loku's Dog and Cat Care Rescue, which is based in Sri Lanka. It's a GoFundMe down below. Every, every little helps, every little helps, and I really appreciate your support. So does the founder, Connie Horchen. Um, know that my readings are closed at the moment. Um, I will let you know when they are open again. So please do not be scammed by anyone reaching out pretending to be me saying WhatsApp, WhatsApp, because I will never reach out to anyone for a reading. If you like a reading when they are open, the only way to gain one is to email me. My information again is down below. Um, what was I going to say? There was something else. Yeah, please do not let anyone pull the wool over your eyes, your lovely eye holes, uh, pretending to be me. Love, light, see you later. Bye.